Hey guys, my name is Cassandra and today I'm going to be talking about our budget for the year 2021 living here in Yellowknife Northwest Territories, Canada, as well as our savings goals for the year 2021. So if that sounds interesting to you, if you're wondering how much it costs to live in Yellowknife or what someone's budget might be so you can set budget goals, then this will be a great video for you. Consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing if you haven't already. And let's get into it. All right, so this is our budget for the year 2021. I've just put the totals of what we have budgeted in that January column. And that's not what we've already spent in January. So at the top, I put all of our income. So you'll see Chris's work there and other. I just left those out just because Chris doesn't wish for me to expose his income. So down below, then we have uh, what's called fast offering. So that is just what we pay to the church. We do a fast every month and we take that money that we would have spent on food and plus a little more usually, and we donate it to the church. We also donate other things. We donate 10% of our income in total to the church uh, in a tithe. So the next thing is our electric bill. As you can see, I've budgeted 200 for that. And that's only on because I wanted to make sure it's covered. It's never actually been 200. It's always been below. I think 190 has been the highest bill we had last year. That's just to make sure it's covered. Any extra can just go to savings. The next one is our internet. So that's 147. And we have a big, pretty big internet package. I think we're kind of mid-range there. So you can definitely have internet cheaper, but I obviously do YouTube and we also don't have cable. So we stream our shows. The next one is my phone. Uh, and then Chris's phone is the one after. So I pay 75 for mine and he just actually switched his phone plan. So that will be going down. That's our phone plan from Ontario. So it's about the same as mine, 75. Then we have groceries. I've split it up. As you can see, groceries is listed again at the bottom. I've split it up just between the two paychecks. So 400 in the first you know, half of the month. I don't care if I spend the whole 800 at the beginning of the month. As you guys know, I did used to do uh, once a month grocery hauls, but it's just to show that's how much I aim to spend for every two weeks. And then we've got gas. We've got 150. We definitely use that with our new car now. <laughs> we have a Chevy Traverse, so it's pretty big. Um, and it uses a lot more gas than our little Honda Fit did. So, you know, sometimes we go a little bit over that, but I would like to try to stay within 150. The next one is our household budget. So that is just $50. It was 100 last year. If you guys can remember, I did do this video last year. I showed you my budget for Yellowknife. Um, that was more of like my guesses when we first moved here. I kind of made a budget for the year. This is now based on what we have learned we actually spend. Um, but if you're interested in that video, of course, you can check it out. I'll link it down below for you. Line of credit is 75. That's going to go away this year. I think we only have to pay that for about four or five more months, but we pay $75 a month on that. That's just a line of credit from when I was a student. Then I've got my student loan there. I pay $265 a month on that. We, I think we have about maybe just under $5,000 on that left. And then of course, Chris's student loan. So I think we have about 20,000 on that. Then we've got restaurants. Again, I've split it up. It's a hundred a month, but I did 50 per half the month. Then again, I've got Chris's second paycheck. There's our child tax. It comes out the second half of the month and then other for that as well. Then we've got the extra 400 for the groceries. We've got rent. I put that at the end of the month just because it's the rent for next month. I wanna have it in the bank ready. So we're kind of working a month ahead. Um, that's 2100 and if you guys haven't seen my apartment tour video, I'll link that below for you. I talk about the different rent um, in the area. I also have done a whole video dedicated to rentals and house houses that are available in the area and what they cost and what the property taxes are and blah, blah, blah. So I'll link that down below for you as well. I also do a ton of grocery hauls. So I'll link that play playlist too if you're interested in that. Then we've got the other half of the restaurant. I'm working on some restaurant reviews, so make sure you definitely subscribe if you're interested in what the restaurants are like around here. Then we've got savings for the next two tabs. I'm gonna be showing you the next two tabs, the yearly one time and the yearly rollover in the next slide. Uh, but the total of those two things, if I save $608 a month, then it will cover our expenses for the year in those two tabs. Then I've got a redheaded hostess subscription. That's $14 a month. That's generally going to be covered by my homeschool budget, but it's not covered in the summer. And also I've used it all already for the year. So I'll have to wait until September to get that covered again. Same with the Kindle. We pay for Kindle Unlimited and that will again be covered by the homeschool budget for basically August onward. So then we have got the yearly one time. Let's move on to that. 
All right, so these are all things that I only pay for one time in the year. <laughs> so it's not budgets like clothing, which I pay for multiple times in the year. It's just mostly holidays, birthdays, and just like, you know, if you're paying your insurance or something just once a year. So at the very top there, we've got our license plate renewal. It's about 130. Then I've got Valentine's Day, 120 for that holiday, just because it's for Chris and the kids. So I just want it to be a little bit bigger of a budget. General Conference is 60. I'm reading it on a small screen. 60 or 80. I should have brought my glasses. <laughs> I think it's 60. So General Conference is a thing we do twice a year in our church and it's a video conference all weekend. So I just do little bags for the kids to basically entertain them so that we can all listen better to the speakers because even they listen better when they're kind of fiddling with something. So I do have videos on that. I'll link those down below if you're interested in some you know, quiet activities for children. My children are five and three, just in case you're wondering and you're new here. Next is our Amazon's Prime subscription, which I would say is pretty essential here in Yellowknife. There's not much variety, so we do buy a lot of things online. So we do like to have the Prime just to get that free shipping and not have to worry about hitting that, you know, whatever the minimum is to get the free shipping. We just don't have to worry about it. We just go on and order it whenever we need. So we also use the Prime Video, and I also did a video on Prime Video's best educational shows for children. If you're interested in that, just I have a plug for every single thing on my budget, apparently. Um, <laughs> I've also done Easter baskets uh, videos. So anyway, so if there's anything you want to see on my channel, go ahead and uh, search it or also check down below and I'll link everything for you. So then we've got our Easter budget. Uh, I think it's 60 for all these. I'm really sorry if it's not. <laughs> Mother's Day, same thing. Alice's birthday is 100 because we do a party for her as well. So that counts party supplies and gifts. Father's Day is 60. Car insurance there. Obviously that changes every year, but that's our max just to make sure, you know, that we have enough covered. We get a friend magazine every year for Alice. It's just like a little kid's magazine. It's $11 per year. Then we've got Nintendo Switch. We do a subscription to that every year as well. Uh, we've got Dad's birthday, a general conference again because it's twice a year. Halloween, that's for costumes and candy. Mom's birthday, Disney Plus subscription. We've got $90 for that as well. Christmas, um, and then Tobias's birthday, AMA renewal. It's basically when you need to be towed or you need your battery restarted or whatever. I think you get like three or five a year if you pay the yearly subscription. And we definitely usually use quite a few. Just the other day we had to get our car battery uh, charged because it died and so the winters are hard up here on cars if you forget to start it a couple times a day I find or drive it um, definitely if you don't start it once a day by the second day it's dead in our experience with our cars so um, yeah that's important <laughs> if you ever forget that and you need to boost or whatever uh, because you'd be paying that I'm pretty sure t like twice even once maybe um, if you were to call a tow truck so it's a handy thing to have up here uh, then we've got our anniversary. Chris just does our anniversary and I do Valentine's Day for him. So we sort of switch off for gifts in that category. All right. So now we've got our rollover money. So this is money that's flexible. I know I have it written per month there, what I would like to spend. It doesn't matter if I buy, you know, say I buy, for example, with clothing, I buy way more clothing close to the winter because we get the kids all new winter clothing than I, you know, than I would in the middle of the year. So I might spend, you know, $200 one month and that's fine as long as the yearly total matches. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's like a budget for the year, but it can roll over per month. So first we've got my personal money. That just means any money I want to spend on anything sort of frivolous. So like if I want to, you know, buy new makeup or I want to whatever, buy something for my YouTube channel or whatever, it all comes out of my personal money. So those are things for our hobbies basically. And then Chris is the same. If he wants to buy fishing stuff, that's mostly what his is used for. Then we've got homeschool and sports and we do have homeschool coverage up here for like funding up here in the Northwest Territories. If you're interested, I will link a video uh, if you're interested in more about that. But that budget is just for the summertime, like if they want to continue their sports. Also, it has been for Tobias since he is not registered. So anything I buy for him in regards to homeschooling or sports, I have to pay out of pocket, of course. So uh, that's what that is for. Clothing is the next one. That includes all winter gear outside, clothing, shoes, whatever. The next one is medical. We do have benefits for from Chris's work, but they sometimes only cover 80%, like 80% for prescri prescriptions, sorry. 
So it's things like we have to buy Tobias's EpiPens every year, which maybe we won't have to now. He's going for a peanut test in a few weeks. It looks like he may have grown out of his allergy. I'd be so happy if that happens. But anyway, um, yeah, so it's just for any random prescriptions that come up or even like massages that are 80% covered. So that could come out of medical. Then we've got car maintenance. That is more of like just a yearly thing if we need to take the car in for any reason. I find that a thousand hopefully will be enough per month, but that is not saving up for a car. I always kind of want to be in a constant state of saving up for a new car just in case anything happens to our old car. I want to have the money just there and available, and you'll see that in the next tab for our long term savings goals. The next one is dates and family home evenings. So if I need um, family home evenings, are we get together as a family once a week? We do an activity together and do a little spiritual lesson. And so if I need any supplies for that or Chris and I are doing a home date and I want to get some, you know, special food or whatever, a new game or whatever, um, then it would come out of that fund. And then the next one is just unexpected. So if I happen to go over budget, then that money is there for that. All right, and here's the last slide, which is our long-term saving. These are just general long-term savings goals that we want, we know we want in the future that are gonna take a significant amount of money. So we don't expect to accomplish all these things in 2021, of course. <laughs> uh, so the first one is that new car budget that I talked about, just having that money available for a new car. I should probably increase that a little bit, but 20,000 is what we paid for our car that we have now. So I just figured that would be a good place to try to you know, save, or that would be a good landmark to try to save for again. Then the next one is a three month emergency savings basically if Chris you know say Chris lost his job or got hurt and needed to be off for three months or if I go on maternity and he wants to take a longer paternity stuff like that then we have that three month savings that are available for us to use so that we're not you know we can pay our rent and all that stuff. Um, okay so the next one is, is a house I want to save a down payment for us to be able to buy a house I'm aiming for 50,000 the next one is Disney I want to go to Disney next year so I want to save 15,000 for that we do have some of these savings already from last year but um, that's my goal for that as well as a boat we want to buy a boat in the springtime this year we've almost got enough saved for that I just have a $10,000 budget he won't use all that hopefully but <laughs> it's there and then whatever he finds the extra will go probably into my disney fund um, as well as our tax refund so that will be good to go uh, then we've got the yearly rollover um, i just want to have a year in advance for that again just as an emergency preparation so i can have that money already there and be pulling from it from the last year instead of saving it month by month in the year you're in i hope that makes sense so that's it. Thank you so much for watching this today, guys. I hope you found it interesting and helpful, maybe for setting goals for yourself or, you know, just interesting to know what the costs are living in Yellowknife. If you're interested in more specific videos, I will definitely have them linked down below for you. If I've mentioned them in the video that I have them, or you can just search on my channel for any questions you might have. I've done a lot of videos, so it's likely if it's, especially if it's about Yellowknife, that I've probably done a video on it. If I haven't, definitely let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to make a video on it for you. So yeah, thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next video.